the devil's fighting me this morning. I don't know what key, but we know Ryan will find me. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplies every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free as free indeed. And it is joy unspeakable and full of.
How many has God done anything good for you today? Yes, amen. Wow, I'll tell you. You don't get enough praise, I'll tell you that. If we praise Him half as much as we uh, allow ourselves, and I'll say that word strongly, as, as long as we, as much as we allow ourselves to focus on the negativity in this world, there's always going to be that. Yes, amen. So we're here to give God glory this morning. I want you to think back when uh, God first saved you. Think of the feeling that you felt. Oh, yes. Amen. And the joy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This song simply says, If you had known me before I knew him, you'd understand my love. Yeah. I just want you to meditate on the Lord this morning. Just worship him. Give him praise. Before I knew him 
just like a sponge to feel God's presence and, and just to know that the creator has taken time out for you and I this morning just all to humble you this morning there's a lot of things going on in the world a lot of things going on in life and it can be easy to get pulled away and distracted. And a lot of things come, a lot of people come, a lot of people go, but there's been one constant in my life, and that's been Him. Amen? Thank God He's been there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, Sabrina, and turn it on. If you want to follow along this morning, you'll see it up here, 1 Samuel. <clears throat> was going to read several more, but we decided just to do the first two. 1 Samuel chapter 19, <clears throat> verses 1 and 2. And as I was reading this, I got several other ideas and, uh, you know, a couple different directions that this could go. I'm not for sure which direction it's going to go. But that's why we follow the leading of the Spirit of God because He knows what we need this morning. Verse 1, chapter 19 says, And Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. Can we say amen to God's word this morning? I want to go back to the last couple of sentences there in verse 2. And this, I believe, will really, really speak to you this morning. He said, Take heed unto thyself until the morning. Abide in a secret place and hide thyself. Listen to that. Take heed unto thyself. Abide in a secret place and hide thyself. And that's what the Lord started speaking to me about through these scriptures. And if you go down a little bit further in this 19th chapter, and I didn't read it, but I do want to make mention of it, to where David was before Saul playing his instrument. We've all heard of it. We all know the story and an evil spirit was upon Saul. And he sought to take the life of David while David was there ministering to him and for him. But yet Saul was overtaken and he tried to kill David with a javelin. And this morning, I want to take my time as we go through this. You know, we all had problems and we all had things, sins, vices that we were caught up into before we miraculously got saved and got our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And 
And what a day that was. <laughs> you know, I thought I was living before. I thought I had life before. And I didn't know how I'd react the moment that I made my mind up to lay down sin and start following the Lord. Trust me, those of you who are saved this morning, it's an experience, listen, it's hard to explain it. But you know this morning, it's an experience. Hallelujah. An experience that was life changing. An experience that this world needs to know about. An experience that this world needs to experience. But as I thought about this over the last few days, you know, Satan will not give up. He will never give up. Matter of fact, I've said it before, I'll say it again. He fought Jesus up until his dying hour. Amen. Jesus hung there on a cross, bleeding, dying, dehydrated, Amen. through so much pain. Amen. And Satan uses individuals. Amen. And he used a couple of folks walking by as they looked up and wagged their heads and he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Hey, why don't you come down off that cross? Do you see what Satan was trying to do? Amen. Won't you come down off that cross? Good Lord. But you know what? There's an old song, and I don't remember who sang it, but they talked about in the song that it was, was not nails that held Jesus to the cross, but rather his love for you and I. You see, if Jesus comes down, it's all over. But we see the subtlety of Satan was sin. And there is an allure of sin. Listen. Most of the time, it's not the great big things that come and hit you right in the face that is going to give you the most problems, but it's the little things to where people may straddle the fence. Well, I'm on the fence about this. I don't know if it's wrong or not. I'm on the fence about that. I don't know if it's wrong or not. Let me tell you what a preacher who I recently heard said this. If you're on the fence about something, remember this, that Satan owns the fence. Amen, Brother Mike. And there is an allure. Listen, a lot of people wonder about different things. And I think we need to take heed to the things that we do, to the things that we entertain. Amen. To where we go, to what we watch, what we put into this body. That's the truth. And I couldn't get away from these scriptures. They've been in my mind for the last couple of days and the more I thought about it the larger these scriptures got and you know what a lot of times we are our own worst enemies we have enough problems with Satan coming to us and tempting us trying to draw us away so we need not make it any harder on ourselves by entertaining other things that is going to bring problems to our lives later on. Jonathan said, take heed unto thyself, David. You see, David was and is one of my favorite people in the Word of God to read about. I've done a study of his of his life in the scriptures and 
I know his story inside and out. That's why I make mention of him. That's why I refer to him so much. If you want to know things, and listen, David had problems just like everybody else. But when I think about David and, and about his life, I try to look at his heart through the scriptures because his heart got God's attention. Now think about that. David's heart got God's attention. In David, God said, I have found a man after my own heart. If you love him, raise your hands and praise the King. Good Lord. Wouldn't it be great this morning if God would testify about you? Wouldn't you like God to say, in Brother Frank or Brother Earl or Sister Powell or Brother Ron or everybody up in the back, in this servant of mine, I have found somebody who is after my very own heart. Good Lord, somebody give them a praise this morning. I have found somebody. Yet yeah, they may have a flaw. They may stumble here and there, but I know that their heart is with me. Praise God. And that's what the church needs to look at. The heart needs to turn back to God and get away from everything else because things are here to make you stumble, to get you to fall, to get your eyes, uh, praise God, out of focus. Uh, the Bible says if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. Uh, oh, good God, I want you to know something. If the church could ever get it together and completely walk in the scriptures, uh, you'd see things happen that you've never seen happen before. My God, if we'd only get focused uh, on what's important not worry about everything else you'd see God come you'd see a mighty move like you'd never seen before my God if we can only get it together and live in the word and walk in the word if you walk in the word you'll walk in the spirit because Jesus said my word is spirit walk in his word you'll walk in the spirit and will not fulfill the lust of the flesh Love them, raise your hands in praise. Hallelujah. I'm just enjoying myself this morning. But I look at the life of David. And one of the things that stuck out in these scriptures in, in verse 1 Jonathan was told by Saul, his father, and all the servants to kill David. Now, Jonathan and, and David were really good friends. They loved each other. Can you imagine how it made Jonathan feel when the king's commandment came down to kill the very one who you were knit with? When we do not like the commandment. Mm -mm -mm. When the commandment that we receive is very hard to swallow. Let that sink into you for a while. Let that, let that sink down in your heart. Listen, I've not always liked everything that God has commanded me to do. And if you'll be honest, you haven't either. This is a hard saying that, that Jonathan received from his father. We're going to seek out, we're going to kill your best friend. When that commandment is hard to hard to wrap, wrap your wrap your mind around, and, and this is what Jonathan is going through here at this moment. One thing I have found is that though it may be hard to understand at the time, though it may be hard to comprehend at the time, you should never doubt anything that God has commanded you to do in His Word. It may hurt this flesh for a little while. And you know what? Hurting the flesh is a good thing. Hurting this 
this flesh is a beautiful thing. Matter of fact, crucifying this flesh is a very beautiful thing. You've got to kill it and get under it daily. By God, crucify it. By God, don't live through the flesh. The Bible says if you live through the flesh, then you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. My God, we've never lived until you live through the spirit. You've never been free till you've been free in the Holy Ghost. My God, we talked about it a little bit Thursday night about people not praying in the Holy Ghost anymore. It done my heart good this morning when we knelt around the old-fashioned altar and I heard people praying in the heavenly language. My God, it's time to turn back to the old commandments. It's time to turn back to the old path where it is the good way. My God, it was filled with the things of God. It was filled with hearing healings. It was filled with signs. It was filled with wonders. It was filled with miracles. And a whole lot of people were getting saved on the old path. But anymore, praise God. If it feels good, do it. If it looks good, go after it. That's not what the Word of God says. You're to shun even the very appearance of evil, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Somebody praise it. Now, Jonathan sent out word to David. My father has just sent down this commandment. He's commanded the first one that sees you to kill you. Now listen. David, if you look, had the utmost respect for Saul. The utmost. Counted him as God's anointed. And I just wonder how it made David feel. And like I said, I didn't read the scriptures, but I made mention of it. Eventually, Jonathan talked some sense into his father. He said, this man has not wronged you. He has not sinned against you. Matter of fact, while you're here seeking to take his life, he's out killing the enemy, slaughtering them for you. And I think that may be half the problem that Saul had. They would come in from battle, come in from war. The people would say, look at Saul, he's killed thousands. Then on the other hand, Oh, but here comes David. He's killed tens of thousands. So do you see little things that Satan tries to make stick to you? Come on now, I'm preaching to you. What in the great big thing? It's the little things. It's the small things. It's just a little bit of leaven that leavens the whole lump. Guess what? It got inside us all. I will rid this man of this land I am King Saul I'm going to put out a decree what you did not realize King Saul or maybe you did God had a call on David this was to be the future King you can't kill what God has blessed here brother Simon they can't kill what God has blessed Satan can't kill what God has ordained my God if you're walking with them if you're lining up with the word every day I don't care how much Satan comes I don't care how big of a wind he blows your way I don't care how much he makes people come down on you what you need to understand is that you are called of God that you are ordained of God my Lord even your footsteps are ordered by God somebody praise him this morning you're anointed by God Satan don't like it, but you know what? There's nothing he can do about it. <laughs> I said there's nothing he can do about it. So finally Saul comes to his senses for a minute. 
And he agrees with his son and says, all right. David's restored. Now, now watch this. And this is a point that I really want to drive home and that I really want you to grip and, and, and I wanted to grab a hold of you this morning. Some of you may be trusting in things that right now seems all right. Doesn't seem like there's any harm in it. Amen. David was restored. He was playing in front of King Saul. David trusted enough to be there. But what David trusted in eventually tried to kill him. Good God, let that preach. Some of you may be sitting here this morning. Well, this doesn't seem wrong. Probably doesn't seem right either. Well, I'm trusting that this isn't going to drag me down. David trusted in Saul too. Amen. Saul picked up the javelin and threw it at David and tried to take David's life. But you know what? That's just the way it is when you serve God. How many times has God already had you one step ahead? My Lord, hallelujah, how many times has God ordered your footsteps one step ahead? If David doesn't look up, then that javelin nails him to the wall. But once again, his footsteps were ordered by God, and so is yours. How important are you to God this morning? I'll tell you how important you are. He let the angels of God encamp around about you last night, my God, to fend off See, God will have you one step ahead. One step ahead, you say, that's getting ahead of God. No, one step ahead is right on time with God. What he trusted in sought to kill him. It sought to slay him. The words that Jonathan spoke to him I believe we all need to take note of it. David, take heed unto thyself. Take heed unto thyself. You see, when you look at yourself, your body, it's flesh. It's from this earth. It seeks the things of this earth. The pleasures of this earth, this world, which are only but short for a short time and a short season. Take heed what you let come in. Take heed what you let go out. And not only that, he said, take heed to yourself and hide thyself. Mm -hmm. That's good preaching right there. Take heed to thyself. And David, I want you to hide yourself. I don't know how many times. <laughs> Satan has sent a storm my way. Satan has sent a storm your way. Let me preach to the folks in the back. Satan has devised something that he meant to take you down with. My Lord, but I want you to know something. I followed the words of the word of God and I hid myself. 
hallelujah, in a secret place. I hid myself. Thank God. I am hid with God in Christ Jesus. I'll hide myself behind the old rugged cross. I want you to know something. It worked for David back then. It'll work for you right now. I'm going to hide myself in Jesus Christ. I'll stand for Jesus. I'll let the world go by my God. If you love him, somebody shout this morning. If you love him this morning, somebody shout amen. I'll live for Jesus and let the world go by. I'll claim his promise. He will provide. We're going to walk this road together. The Lord and I. I'll live for Jesus. Let the world go by. Hide thyself. Take heed to thyself. And hide thyself. You know what? That old rugged cross. I've hid behind it. Through countless battles. Through countless wars. I've hid behind it. You know what? When it's all safe to come out. Hallelujah, I'll see the sun shine again. Listen, everything's not bad. Everything's not gloom and doom. We're going to see the sun shine again. My God, we're just pilgrims passing through this land down here. I want you to know something. I feel a little bit like Abraham. Oh my God, I'm looking for a city that had foundations. Whose builder and maker is God? I can hear Dad saying that song right now. I'm looking for a city. I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Looking for a city. Looking for a city. Looking for a city. Oh my God, when it's time to quit hiding, we're going to hear the trumpet sound and he's going to take us home. Say goodbye. Give me a G, Ron. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe that's not it. But he used to say, down here among the shadows, living alone in the land. Good Lord. <laughs> We're a band of pilgrims on the moon. Burdened down with sorrow, shunned on every hand. But I'm looking for a city out above. Brother Ron, I can't hit that high note. Maybe you can. My Lord, stand this morning with me. Yes, Put your hands together. Go ahead and sing that, Ron. I'm going to play the drums for you. Looking for a city.
Don't be like, don't be like so many others that's gone on before. They trusted in something that eventually jumped up and bit them and took them down. There is nothing in this world, nothing in this life worth losing your soul over. For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Yeah, the soul is that God part. It's that eternal part. All souls are God, the Bible says. The soul that sinneth it shall surely die. Read it. That's what the scripture says. And in the midst of a falling away, let's not lie or kid ourselves. Things ain't like they used to be. We used to they will be again. The restorer is going to restore things again. Used to be. People work church around things. Maybe I got that backwards. Church come first. We'd schedule things around church but anymore it's the opposite take heed to thyself amen brother Mike amen. hide thyself and listen it happened to so many great people in the word of God listen it eventually happened to David amen. happened to Samson happened to Balaam didn't take heed to their self and what I want, I'm looking for, listen. I want to see people so full of God. <laughs> listen, we hear about demon-possessed people and devil-possessed people. I want to see some God-possessed people. Amen. Say amen. I want to see some God-full, God-possessed filled people my Lord my Lord walking in the light of the word in this darkened world hallelujah we are listen we are the salt of this world the salt of this earth what does salt do it does a couple of things number one eat a bunch of uh, eat enough of something with salt in it you're going to be drinking water all day you know what it does it makes you thirsty People are supposed to look at the church and thirst for what they have. Say amen. People are supposed to look at the church and say, that is God reflected in a person. Let me have a little bit of that. Let me walk a little bit like they're walking. But I'm here, listen. We may not have many, but I believe what we have is true. I'd rather have 30 people who are true Amen. than 500 that don't know whether they're coming or going and if they want God or not. Amen. Jesus took 12 men and absolutely turned the world upside down. <laughs> absolutely turned the world upside down with 12 men. If one can put a thousand to flight, and two can put 10,000 to flight. Amen. My math isn't that good, but if we can all come together, yeah. my Lord, there's about 35 or 40 in here. How many can we put to flight if everybody just got together? Yeah. Hide thyself. Yeah. Close your eyes this morning if you would. Brian, sing something for me. If you're here this morning, you need prayer. You're here this morning and something may have crept back into your life. You haven't been hiding yourself. You say, Brother Mike, I'm fearful of this. I don't, I, I don't want this to be my end. Well, you don't have to let it be like that. You don't have to let it end like that. If you're here this morning and you're falling into this category, once you get out of that seat and come down to this altar, let's pray and let's make it right. Let's get it covered. Let's make it right. 
anybody anywhere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If not, does anybody need prayer this morning for a need for a sickness, illness? Amen. Anybody else before we pray? Hallelujah. Brother, I go ahead and sing something softly. for God to move. Amen. I know he's in fire. I, I know he's in an earthquake. But some, sometimes, brother, he's in a still small voice. this morning. God, we stand upon your promises and we stand upon your word. Lord, we live by them for we know that they are true. God, we're praying. Lord, for this grandchild that's going through this stress test, Lord, the one that's having these problems. Lord, you created this body. You created everything with inside of it. Lord, we're asking you to perfect it. Lord, perfect that, Lord, which is in need this morning. God, I'm praying no more problems. Lord, no more heartaches, no more physical illness. Lord, I'm standing upon you, standing upon your word. You are a liar, Satan. We know sickness is of the devil. Lord, every good and perfect gift comes down from God above, even now.
Sheila said she really felt led to stand in for my niece this morning who's sick. And she kept saying, oh, please pray for her. Please pray for her. Please have the church pray for her. I said, well, you know we will. So we know there's no distance in prayer, so let's agree this morning. Come on, brother. Father, Lord, we're thankful for the promises of God, which are yea and amen unto your glory. God, and I'm asking you to help where help is needed. Lord, she's down here. Lord, in those hills by herself with those four kids. Lord, she's sick. Lord, we need your healing power, Lord, to fall upon her. God, we're asking for your grace to help her make it through this, Lord. And I'm asking not only that, but protection around those children, about all those that are around them, Lord Jesus. We're asking to heal this body, Lord. Lord, where sickness is, Lord, may health abound. Lord, we're looking forward to hearing what you've done, Lord. We agree in prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call this done. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you love him this morning? Hallelujah. Do you appreciate him this morning? And give him the biggest hand of praise that you can find this morning. Hallelujah. Be good. In the house of the Lord. Amen. Appreciate those who took time, came out and joined us this morning. Remember the words of the Lord. Remember the word of God. Listen, Satan knows he has just a short time. And we know it too. We know it too. We can look at it. We can see it. You can feel it. He's doing everything he can in his power to bring you down and draw you out. But you know what? I'm doing my best. I want to see everybody there. The marriage supper of the Lamb, I want to see everybody there. Amen? And I believe God is going to get us there. Let's close our, our, or let's bow. I've done it again. Didn't I say that last week? Or the week before? Close our heads. I get tongue tied every once in a while. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Let's dismiss him for our Heavenly Father. Lord, once again, you've allowed us to come into your presence. Lord, you've showed up and you've blessed us. Lord, you've allowed us to hear a portion of your word. And we pray, God, that it will help everyone here along their way. Lord, that it would be abundant, Lord, that it would be placed in their heart and bring forth a great abundance of fruit, Lord, unto your glory. Lord, we're praying for everyone here throughout this week. Lord, that when the battles come and when the struggles come, Lord, that they would hide their self behind the old rugged cross. Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us. We'll give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe there's some goodies next door, right? Going over to get them? Oh, it's next week? I just saw Rob walking out. I thought he was doing something. My bad. <laughs>